If you've been following the channel for the last couple of weeks, you'll know that I've switched to XFC and I've been having an, a really good time with it. And over that course of two weeks or so, I've made a couple of videos on XFC. And one of the things that I've been asked the most is to teach people how to make it look good. Because if you've ever used XFC, specifically if you've ever used like the vanilla version of XFC that you might get if you installed it on, say, Arch or Gentoo or something like that, it's fugly. It's really really bad like it's looks like it maybe was designed in the windows 95 era which is fair seeing as probably was designed in the windows 95 era but just because it looks like that doesn't mean that it has to look like that so what i'm going to do today is take you through how to customize or rice xfce from top to bottom now i am not using the vanilla version of xfc because it doesn't really matter what version you use. They're all going to customize exactly the same way. I just happen to have a, a Zubuntu ISO lying around. So I've installed Zubuntu in a virtual machine. And we're going to rice it. So let's go ahead and jump in and do that. So this is the standard Zubuntu desktop. If, like I said, you have installed XFC on another distro. Or you're using Arco or some other distro that comes with XFC. It's going to look a little bit different for you. But it doesn't matter because the process is exactly the same. So... The first thing that you should know, or the first thing that you should do, is change the wallpaper. Find yourself a wallpaper. That's where I recommend you start off every theming adventure with, because you can use the colors from your wallpaper to do your theming, if that's what you're planning on you know, doing. Or you can find a built-in or pre-configured color scheme to use. So, I'm going to emulate my current setup, which is using Grovebox. So, we'll need a Grovebox wallpaper so let's go ahead and open up firefox and we'll go find that wallpaper this wallpaper will do just fine so we'll save image as we'll save it in pictures and we'll save well we're gonna actually we're gonna rename that thing because i hate really bad wallpaper names i have a whole folder full of bad wallpaper names and i regret my life choices every time I see it. So we're just gonna call this wallpaper very creatively. I'm I'm sure you'll agree that that's the most creative name for wallpaper that has ever existed. So we'll hit save there. Easy enough to download and then we'll minimize this here and we'll right click and now depending on what distribution you are this may be a little bit different. Sometimes when you right click on the desktop you'll get a application launcher. So It'll be a list of the categories that your applications are sorted in. If that's the case, you'll want to go to settings and then desktop. If you get this menu here, when you right click, just click desktop settings. Either way, they're going to look exactly the same. The next thing you'll want to do is go into the folder, go to pictures, click on the wallpaper you just downloaded, and hit close. That's really all you need to do. Now, if you want to get rid of the icons on the desktop, you can do so from here as well, just by clicking on icons where it says icon type, go to none, and they will go away. Now, I don't like icons on my desktop, so we're going to get rid of those. If you do like icons on your desktop, this page here will help you customize them outside of the theme. So you can change the size, you can change the font size, you can change what icons are actually there by default. Uh, obviously, if you want things that aren't included in this list, you can also drag and drop icons onto the desktop. But that's only going to work if this is enabled. So... If you want to be one of those people who have a desktop full of a whole bunch of icons, this has to be turned on. Okay, so we're going to hit close here. We're done with the desktop. Now, the next thing we want to do really is going to be the panel. The panel is going to be the hardest part for basically anyone, and it's not even really all that hard. So we, the thing you'll need to know about the, the XFC panel is that it is 100% movable, but it's locked by default. So you want to right click on it, go to the panel menu, and then panel preferences. Okay, and then you want to unselect this part here where it says lock panel. When you do that, you'll see this handle up here in the upper left hand corner, and that will allow you to drag it wherever you want, uh, top to bottom, if you have it set to horizontal. If you want it to be vertical, you do it like so, and then you could drag it, drag it left or right and put it wherever you want. Okay, I'm going to leave it horizontal because, again, we're going to be mimicking my setup. So I have the bar on the bottom. So I'm going to drag it down here to the bottom. Now, I'm not going to drag it all the way to the bottom. Instead, I'm going to leave it about right there. Now, the next thing I'll want to do is change the length to about 65. So we're going to do 65. We went to a bit too far. 
66 is fine. And then we're going to drag it to the center. Now, this is the one flaw that I've found in the XFC panel is that as far as I'm aware, there's no good way to center it. If you have a floating panel like this, if you want to center it, you're going to have to do it on your own just by using your eye holes. Uh, so uh, I'm going to attempt to judge where the center is. That looks about right. And then we'll leave it there. Now, I'm also going to increase the row size up to about 29, I think, or so. Eh, maybe a little bit more, maybe about 32. Uh, we can always change this later on if we need to. So there's that. Now, we're not done with the panel. You could stop here, obviously, if you wanted to. But... If you want to have my setup with the rounded corners and stuff like that, we're going to have to continue on. So the next thing we'll want to do is change the items. Now, in some places you'll see these called items. In some places you'll call, see them called applets. It doesn't matter what you call them. Basically, they're, they're widgets on your bar. So the first thing we'll want to do is go to this tab here. And what we're going to want to do is customize some of the settings of the stuff that's already here. So first, we'll go to the window buttons. We'll click on the settings icon here. You can also get to this by right clicking on the buttons down here, but it's easier to do this while we're here. So the first thing we're going to want to do is uh, unclick this. Actually, we're going to leave that on. Sorry, excuse me. And we want to click unclick show button label so that it just shows the icons. And then we want to edit some of the settings for the filtering. So if you have multiple monitors or you're planning on using multiple workspaces, how you want these icons to show up really depends on how you do your workflow. So I prefer to have all the icons showing for every workspace on this monitor. So I click this one, I unclick this one, and then that one's done. I also change it so that it's always done by window title. So they're just kind of in alphabetical order. You can have them sort however you want. It doesn't really matter. That's just the way that I have it done. So that's that. You also, if you're at this point and you're using Vanilla Gnome, the show handle button will probably be checked by default. And that's going to show these three little buttons no matter what, whether the panel's locked or not. I hate that, so I turn that off. But in Zubuntu, it's unchecked by default. So uh, whether it's on or off for you, again, is going to be something that you'll want to handle on your own, whether you like it or not. So if you want to leave it, you can. If you don't want to leave it, whatever. Now, another thing that you may want to change while you're here is whether or not you have window grouping. So if you have, say, multiple instances of your file manager or Firefox or whatever, in some instances of XFCE, this is changed to always, which will mean that every time you have multiple instances of a window or an application, I should say, they'll be grouped together so you'll have one icon. I don't like this because it makes it harder to get to those instances. You have to hover over one and then click, or if you, have, I think you have to click and then click again. I just want to be able to go to the icon and click. So I always have this set to never in Zubuntu. It's set by never by default. I think in the vanilla version of XFCE, it's set to always. Don't hold me to that. I don't really remember. But again, that's another thing that you'll want to see how it you know fits into your workflow. So that gets us done with window buttons. The next thing we'll want to do is add a workspace switcher widget or item. So we will hit add and then we'll scroll down. You can also search if you don't want to scroll down and we're going to find workspace switcher. We'll add and then we'll hit close. Now, every time you add an item, it's always going to appear at the end of the panel. So you can see we have a new thing right down here and it looks not very good. So we're going to fix that. So we'll click on this in order to reorder items on the panel you hit these up and down buttons. So if you want it to go left, you hit the up button. If you want to hit, hit if you want it to go back right, you would hit the down button. If you're in vertical mode, obviously up and down make a hell of a lot more sense. Of course, what it's really doing is adding it or moving it up the list of, of items here. So up and down still makes sense, but my brain is talking about the bar. So up and down seems a little weird to me, but again, it makes sense. It's just my brain that's weird. Okay, so anyways, We'll hit the plus button until it goes to where we need to go. And we want this on the other side of the separator for now. We'll add another separator here in a minute. And I'll show you how separators work. So th in order to get this to look proper, for now at least, we're going to change this. We're going to change this to buttons. And we're going to change this to... Or we're going to make sure that the show workspace number is off. And that it only shows in one row. And then we'll hit, we'll hit the workspace settings button. We're going to add some workspaces. So I'm going to hit four workspace and then we're going to name these to something different. So we're just going to call them the numbers. So 
you can name these whatever you want. You can, you know, you can do like DT used to do and do WWW and then term or whatever. I'm just going to name them very creatively. One, two, three, and four. That's really all it needs to be. And then we have a workspace switcher, kind of what you would see in a window manager. So what we're going to do a little bit more in terms of actually customizing how those work here in a minute, but that's what that looks like. So we're going to go ahead and hit close here. We're going to hit close here. Now, the next thing we want to do is add another item. We're going to, this time we'll use the search bar and type in separator, hit, click on that, hit add, and then close. And again, it added it all the way to the bottom. So we're going to move that up here and we want that in between the whisker menu and the workspace switcher. So right there. And then we want to hit the settings button. Now separators are very simple and by default separators are going to be this uh, like elongated line up and down. I like to have them transparent, but you can also have them be dots or handles or whatever. I just hit, hit transparent. Now let's just say you want to have things spread out from one another. So you you see here on the bar, we have this space. How that is done is with this particular separator right here. If we click on the settings for this, you'll see that the expand option is checked. And basically what that will, means is that that separator will expand to fit all of the empty space. And it pushes the items from the left side and the right side apart so that there's an empty space in the middle. So that's how you would make it so that you're, you're separators expand to push things around if you want them to do so so there we go there now i would always recommend adding separators to both ends of the panel so the reason why i'm going to do this is because i am going to be having rounded corners on the panel and in order to do that you're going to need a little bit of extra space there and the best way to get space is to use a separator so we're going to actually add two more separators so we'll do separator again and hit this hit add and add again now we'll go down here and take one of them all the way to the top and leave the other one all the way at the bottom. And we're going to do this and then transparent again, close, scroll down here, settings, transparent again, and hit close. Now all that does is add some padding along the edges so that the rounded corners don't look so bad. Now, this is where I'm going to leave you for the items because everyone has different things on their bar depending on what they want to have. So you may, maybe you want weather or maybe you want to have a music widget or whatever. I'm just going to leave this as the default right where we're at right now. This is perfectly fine. You can add your items to your heart's content. It will, you know, just add the ones that you want, put them in the place that you want, customize the settings. That's how you, how you do it very easily. You click on the thing you want to edit, hit the settings icon here. You can also right click on this the item that you want to edit, hit properties there if you want to, if you're not in this particular window. So there is an easy way to get to this or get to the properties of the particular item if you need to. So we're going to leave the items where we are for right now. And that's really all we need to do. So we'll hit close here. Now, basically we're done with the bar. We could leave it here if we wanted to, and we just add our GTK theme, which comes next. Or if you want to get fancy about it, one of the coolest things about XFCE is that it uses CSS to edit basically everything. So if you know a little bit of CSS, you can get very dangerous. And by dangerous, I mean you can get very creative or in my case, steal CSS from other people, which is basically what I've done, but you know, whatever. So I'm gonna show you how to add rounded corners and I'm going to show you how to edit the workspace switcher so that it looks really cool. So in order to do this, we're going to need to go into a terminal. So we're going to open up here and we're going to type in terminal. If you can type, which, you know, everyone knows that I can't, uh, you can also do uh, control alt T I believe this is Ubuntu, so it should work. So I'm going to make this bigger and we're going to go into CD into dot config. And if we do an LS here, we're going to see a folder called GTK dash three dot O. So we're going to CD into that GTK dot three dot O. And if we do an LS here, it's may or may not be empty. If it has something, it'll probably be something called bookmarks. Don't worry about that. You're not going to be dealing with it at all. What you're going to want to do is create a file. So in this case, I'm going to be using Vim, which I'm going to actually have to install. But you can use Nano or you can navigate to this file in a GUI file or, or GUI text editor, whatever you want to use to edit this file, whatever. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to use Vim, so I'm going to do sudo apt install vim 
why Vim isn't included by default continues to baffle me. I mean, whatever. I'm not going to get into that rant. I, I should. I should do a whole video on it, but I'm not going to. Anyways, the file that you want to create is called gtk.css. Now, obviously, you just created this, so it's going to be empty. Now, the first thing we're going to do is round the corner panels, or round the corner of the panels, I should say. So, in order to do this, you will go into insert mode, or however you're going to type this, and you're going to type period.xfc4-panel. So, period.xfc4-panel period, not comma, xfc4 dash panel, and then you're going to enter a squirrely bracket, and then I always close that bracket just so I don't forget later. I'm going to add a tab, and we're going to do border, dash bottom, dash left, dash radius, and then colon, and then you can change these numbers to however you want. I have them set to 13 pixels. And then don't forget your semicolon like so. Or again, if you actually know where the semicolon button is, you can actually type it unlike me. Who hit every button around the semicolon key except for the actual semicolon key itself. So we're going to do this for bottom right radius as well. So border dash bottom dash right dash radius. And then colon and 13 pixels. And then another semicolon. I got it right that time, but only because I looked. Uh, and then we're going to do for the top right and top left as well. So we're going actually going to uh, go into visual mode here and yank these. And then we'll just change this here. Okay, so I'm going to put in the top as well. Uh, I had to do that off camera because for whatever reason change word was not working correctly I still don't know what's going on there that's really was really weird anyways we'll also delete these extra lines because we're done there now we're gonna save and close this and then we're going to type in this right here so it's call it's this is basically going to restart the panel so we're gonna re restart it doing this xfce 4 dash panel dash r and you'll want to remember this because we're going to be using it you know, for a few times. We'll do this, your panel should go away, and then it should start again, which it didn't, which is fascinating, because it does on my system. It should start up again. Okay, well, you wanna know what we'll do is we'll just log out and log back in. I'm not sure why that did that, that's really weird. It must be that I mistyped something in the CSS. I'm wondering if I did. So we're gonna actually go back to that and look and see if we have config gtk3.0 vim into gtk.css now let's see did i mistype something border bottom left radius border bottom right radius border border top left radius border top right radius it looks fine to me if you see the panel come back up you'll see that's that's my system over overlaying the virtual box so don't worry about that it's not actually the panel coming back <laughs> um i'm i'm gonna go ahead and re log out and log back in and see if it comes up because i don't see anything blatant here that i mistyped radius i spelled it right bottom left right left right top top border 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 it looks fine so we're gonna go ahead and close this and we will yes even the right click is not working so we're gonna may actually have to reboot as is usual, when I make these mistakes or when I find something that doesn't go wrong, I leave it in the video so that you guys can see me kind of work through the problem. Because chances are, if I have the problem, you'll have the problem too. And there we go. It worked just fine. It just needed a reboot. Uh, that's not the way that it should have worked, by the way. I'm not sure why it didn't work the right way. Because when you do that, when you open up a terminal and you run the XFC for dash panel dash R, that should restart the panel, not just quit it. So I'm not sure why it didn't work the proper way, but what can I say? But anyways, what you can tell if you look closely is that our our corners are now rounded. And that's really cool. They'll look better once those panels or those handles are gone. And we'll do that now. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll come back to GTK here in just a second. We'll go to the panel preferences again. We can go ahead and lock the panel now. Now, one of the coolest things about this is that the lock panel functionality means that when you have a floating panel like this, you don't accidentally drag it in random places accidentally. You know what I mean? So, 
always lock your panel when you're done with it. It just prevents you from moving it around without meaning to. So we can go ahead and close that. Now, again, if you don't want to mess around with the workspace switcher or maybe you don't work use the workspace switcher, you don't have to do this next part, but I'm going to do it because it's, I think it's cool. Now, uh, I'm going to not type this part here. I'm, I will put all of the CSS that I'm using in a paste bin in, that's linked in the video description, so you don't have to type any of this stuff either. But the next part is about 30 lines of, of CSS, so I'm not going to type it all out because that would just be a pain in the rear. So I'm just going to, to copy and paste it. It'd be much easier. So I'm going to open up the terminal again. We'll cdn2.config again. Oops. And then go into G, the gtk3.0. And then we'll vim into gtk.css. Now we'll go down here all the way to the bottom and open create a couple extra lines so we can paste some stuff. And I'm hoping that my clipboard will transcend the VM. We're going to find out right now. And it will. So we're going to hit paste. So now that I got all this pasted, there are five sections. And they all basically do the same thing over and over again, just in different states of the workspace switch switcher. So whether or not the, the thing is, is checked, and by checked I mean that it's active, uh, whether it is toggled, which also means active, whether it's in flat mode or hover mode or any of the specific modes that it can have. You want to have CSS set for each mode that the workspaces can be had, whether they're active, inactive, or whatever, or whether, you know, obviously there's a hover color here and everything. So you'll want to make sure that you have CSS for each of those states. And that's what this these five sections do so you have flat toggle this is the default mode you have the hover you have the checked and so on so you can also set the font here if you want now i'm going to have to find uh, jetbrains mono actually to install this so we're going to have to go to uh, firefox here and actually install jetbrains mono so we will go here and go to search for nerd fonts it's very easy go to the website Go to downloads, scroll down until you find the font that you want. I'm going to find JetBrains Mono just so I don't have to change that text. And it is, come on, Matt, alphabetical. It's not that hard. There we go right there. We're going to download this. It will go to our downloads folder. So we're going to actually open up a new tab. So Control Shift T to open up a new tab. We're going to CD home, CD into dot, uh, excuse me, downloads. We're doing LS here. We should see the zip file. So we'll do unzip and then JetBrains Mono like so. Do that, and we'll do an LS here. We should see a whole bunch of stuff here, and we're just going to move it all to where we need to go. So we're going to actually do a make directory, mkdir tilde slash dot fonts. Now there is a unzip. There's a flag for the unzip command that would have unpacked this right into the proper directory. I don't know what it is. I've never bothered to look it up. I probably should do that, but I don't. Anyways, we're going to make that directory. We're going to move everything in this folder. Uh, because that's all it's in this folder. Uh, obviously, if you're doing it my way, you could do star.tff or ttf like this, and then tilde slash dot fonts. Okay? Now, dot fonts, the directory that we just created, is not the only place you can put fonts. There's also user slash share slash fonts in your root directory. That's the place you'll want to install it if you're planning on these fonts being used by other users on your computer, or if that's just the place where you want to use it. You, it doesn't really matter. Either way, uh, the dot fonts, oops, which I actually uh, messed up there. I'm going to have to change that because I call it dot font. We're going to have to go up a level and actually change that and make it proper. Now, we can do star dot ttf and then tilde slash dot fonts. Wow, that wasn't even close. I wanted to, and then to enter and we'll move everything there. Or in this case, we'll move dot everything.ttf there. That way we have the fonts that we need. Now, like I said, the dot fonts directory, I think is theoretically not being used anymore. I think they call it depreciated, uh, but it still works and it's just easier to do it this way. So now that we have that done, we can go back to the other tab here and I can finish explaining this. So it sets the font, it sets the font size and it sets the padding. Up here, it sets the border so that the border when it's checked has a white border or when it's not unchecked it doesn't have a, a border at all so let's go ahead and save this and show you what it looks like now 
one thing before we leave, this color here doesn't have to be white. It can be any color that you want. So if you're, you're matching the colors of the Grubbox theme or whatever, you can do so. I just left it at white because it looks fine. Now, technically, the white of Grubbox isn't pure white, but it, it works just fine. And it was easier than looking up the code. So you can, you can put the hex code there if you want to. It would just go here instead of the word white. Okay, so it should be word that it should work just fine. So, anyways, I'm I'm going to uh, quit out of that. Now we're going to see if the XFC four panel restart will actually restart this time. And I'm going to enter there. It should come back up. Come on, come back up. Oh, you pain in the rear. Why aren't you working? I don't know why that's not working. That should work, but it doesn't. So we'll do it the hard way. I'm sure there's a command for the lo for logging out. I wonder. No, I didn't think so. Exit doesn't actually work. Exit will just close the terminal. So we're going to do uh, just reboot again because the right click there isn't working. I'm like I said, I'm sure there's actually a command to log out, but I don't know what it is. One of these days I should learn that. Be something new to learn. Okay. Now type in our password. We should have. Yeah, there we go. See, now you can see that it has a different background button, a uh, color, and it has an underline over under the workspace that is in focus now one thing that you'll notice is that when you hover yeah the hover color is not that great so for me personally i like the same color as the background of the fo in focus one so we're actually going to change that so we'll open up a terminal zoom in again cd.config uh, gtk vim, vim into G G gtk.css now what i think we'll need to do in order to make that work is when it's in hover mode, we'll want to add... I'm actually not sure, because mine, I don't need to set this at all. It was just by default, it was okay. So let me think about this for a second. This is where your knowledge of CSS is going to have to be pretty good, because obviously, if you don't know what to do, you're going to sit here like a dumbass like me and either have to go Googling, which is probably what I'll end up having to do, or actually know what you're doing in the first place, and then you won't have to worry about it. So... Uh, pardon the interruption, I will go look and see what that needs to be in order for this to work. Okay, so it turned out it didn't take me long because I was able to guess, and as you can see, I kind of got it fixed. It's not where I need it to be, but I now know what I need to do in order to do this. And all, this time, the XFC 4-Panel-R actually worked. So I don't know what I was doing wrong, why I wasn't working before. We're going to vim back into here. And the thing that I added was background white. Now... That obviously just gives it a white background when it's being hovered over, and that's not exactly what I wanted to do. So instead, and honestly, you could probably do this in many different ways, because that's kind of the way CSS works, but this is the, the new way of doing it, because this is the only way that I really, you know, kind of know how to do it. So I'm going to make this a hex key instead, or a color code, and the color code for white is 4Fs. I know that much. Now, I think, and I may be misremembering here, but you can add transparency to a background color code by adding two additional letters. Though the thing is, I don't remember if it's supposed to be at the beginning or the end. I think it's the beginning, if I remember right. So I think you can, the beginning or the end. Matt, uh, we're going to find out because we're going to try both. I think it's the beginning. So in order to do this, I think it's BB, something like that. If I right and quit this and then try to restart again, did that work? No. That can just completely ignores it. So that means that it's wrong. So either the, the BB goes at the end or it's not going to work. Maybe that's just a polybar thing. Maybe, 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 because that doesn't look right at all. Maybe that's just a polybar thing and that's the only place that works. And then in which case, yeah, that, obviously that didn't work. Okay. Well, let's see. How do you do, how would you do a transparent background? Hmm. I suppose we could just use a, like a color picker. So let's uh, open up a thing here and do at sudo apt install gpick. Like so, and gpick basically will allow you to get the, or to extract the color code from basically anything. So once this is finished installing, which should be here very soon, we should be able to open up the whisker menu here and type in gpick and like this, pick color, and I'm going to right click on this part here, co copy this code by just clicking on it. And then we're going to go back here. We're going to change this because obviously this did not work. I honestly didn't expect it to work, but 
apparently that's just a polybar thing. And then we're just going to paste that in. So we should right quit that and then restart the panel. And now, <laughs> there you go. Cool, huh? Now you can also change, you can see that there's a very thin blue border around that. That's not going to end up working. So we're going to change that. So that's also on hover. So basically, I don't think I have, so like this is all, this is the border radius for the toggle and check is set here. That's for the radius. The border bottom color when it's checked is white is, is set there. So what we want to do is just, I think if we op just do border and like this and then do one pixel, it doesn't really matter, solid, and then just we'll paste that same number because uh, we really don't want it to stand out. You could have, I probably just use zero uh, as a border just to get rid of it. And then we'll try this again. And then, yeah, there you go. See, cool, huh? So that's how you go about doing that. Now, like I said at the beginning, that is the hardest part of all of this because it requires some knowledge of GT of CSS. And if you don't have any, you have to go steal some. So that's <laughs> that's basically what I did. Now, I years and years ago, I knew a lot about CSS, but that knowledge has just seeped from my brain from disuse. I don't know anything about CSS hardly anymore. I lost all my HTML knowledge too because Markdown just ruined me for everything. I just write everything in Markdown and it, and then you use Pandoc to translate it. So yeah, uh, I've lost all that knowledge. Unfortunately, that means that I have to do things like this, which is basically just steal other people's CSS, which is what I did here. I didn't actually steal. I had help with, I should say. So anyways, the bar is now done. Now you're saying that what about your theme? Now, I, by default, this theme actually looks pretty good with Grovebox because the bar kind of looks like the Grovebox color. In fact, I'd say that the that color is probably is the Grovebox color. It's not going to look much different. But the next things we'll need to do is actually install the Grovebox theme. So we can do this in a couple different ways. I'm going to try it in the easy way. If it doesn't work the easy way, then we will do it in the hard way. Makes sense, right? So we're gonna CD back home. We're gonna stay in the terminal. Now, if you're not if you're not familiar with, or comfortable with the terminal, you could theoretically do this with just a file browser. So you could just download the the tarball or whatever it is of the theme, put it in the appropriate places with your file manager. I'm just gonna use the terminal because it's easier. So I'm going to make two two different directories here. First, we'll make sure that they're not here. So we'll do ls a and make sure that there's not a dot themes and a dot icons. So first we're going to remove that really bad uh, mistype I had earlier where I just did font. So we'll do that and that way that's correct. Oops. Like so. Now we're going to do make directory dot themes and dot icons. Now just like with fonts these can go other places as well. So there's a slash u usr slash share slash themes and there's a slash usr slash share slash icons and again if you install things there they'll be available for everyone that runs on the system and that's usually the default place where you'd want to do that i'm just going to do it here in the home directory even though it usually drives me nuts but that's just kind of the way that i've been doing it simply because when you use flat packs a lot of the times you need to have non-root access to the themes folder in order to forward your flat packs to actually follow the GTK theme. So it's much easier to do if the themes are in a folder that doesn't require root access to, in order to change or have access to. So I've just been using them in the home directory like this, even on my system, even though, like I said, it kind of drives me nuts. Okay. So now if we do an LS-A again, we'll see that we now have two different icons and themes right here. So now we need to go back to Firefox. So Firefox, like so. Okay, wait for the snap to open. <laughs> and we're going to type in the Grovebox GTK theme. Now, the one that I use, I believe, is this one here. It's the one with the rounded corners. I think that's the right one. Of course, you're not going to... Yeah, that's the right one. So we're going to go down here. Now, if you're on Arch, I believe you can just do sudo pacman-s install grovebox-gtk-theme or something like that. And I think that even on Ubuntu, you probably can do that. Let's just see if uh, that's possible. Sometimes they put in the description the actual package's names because, so, like I said, sometimes, yeah, like, 
opens to the arch debian derivative yep it's right here so we're going to want to copy this right here Control c go back to your thing do sudo apt install and then paste that and hit enter enter your password and it's going to oh, that's not that wasn't the right thing was it that that was me being hopeful that was a dependency not not the theme um <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna have to do it the hard way because there's not a package for Ubuntu. It doesn't look like it. I'm pretty sure there was a package for for Fedora, but maybe I'm just remembering installing that dependency and not installing the uh, actual theme. So we're gonna download these. So here's where it gets a little bit tricky because you have to know what the connotations of each of these files are in order to know which one you want. So in order to do that, you have to go down there to their little table here, and what you want is the theme with border decoration for GNOME Shell or the theme with border decoration. I think I want the theme name dash B part. So we're gonna go up here to download and that's this one right here. So we click on it, click download and it's gonna put it in our downloads folder. So we're going to go here and cd into downloads and then we're going to move it into the themes folder. So we're gonna do grubbox and then into tilde slash dot themes which is the directory we made earlier and we'll cd into that cd.themes and then we'll do unzip grovbox dark like so oops we gotta actually spell things right it's surprising and now if we do an ls here we'll actually see that that's here now if you were to do this on gnome you'd need gnome tweak tweaks but because xfc is freaking awesome you don't have to do that you just go into the, the whisker menu or the other menu just and type in appearance and do like that and then you just select select this and now you have the theme installed simple as that now obviously it doesn't work with everything 100 percent right out of the box so first you have to close this type in window manager and like so and then you'll want to go down here and select the same theme so that they look the same all over the place because otherwise it sticks with grave bird and they don't mesh mesh really all that well so you'll want to make sure you change the theme in both places in the window manager and in appearance that's honestly the worst part about xfc well it's not the worst part but it's definitely one of those things that kind of make me mad why aren't they both in the same place and it's okay, man. It's going to be okay. All right. Anyways, I, while I'm here, I'm also going to change the button layout because I always change this to like so, so that the icons are more Mac-like and on the left-hand side. So there we go. Now, the last thing we want to do is find the icons. So we'll just go back up here. We'll stay on GNOME Look and uh, we'll find out where that pesky search box is. Usually the search box is right there. Where'd they move the search box to? It used to be right at the top. Maybe that's the... G now you're saying, well, Matt, it's right over there. That's just your search categories. All right, well, script. We're just going to go Grubbox uh, Linux icons. And that's the one we want right there. It would have been easier if I hadn't had to go to Google, but whatever. So we're going to do the same thing we did here. We're just do download. Download again. It's going to go right into our downloads folder. We'll CD there to downloads. And we will see the file we'll see the file right here now why they can't always just use zip or tar why they have to mix them up because i'm pretty sure that they're by the same freaking author but i might be wrong about that uh actually i think i am wrong about that but it doesn't matter why we can't just standardize on one way of compression i don't know especially on gnome look like we should all just be one or the other but anyways someone had to use tar which means we're gonna have to look up those stupid flags First, we're going to move the grubbox file into tilde slash dot icons. We'll just do it there. And we'll cd into dot icons, like so. And then we're going to do tar dash z xvf. Don't ask me why. Those are the flags that you have to use. It's really silly, and I have to look it up every single time. That's why I have an alias on my actual system. And then we'll do the grubbox theme like so and then if we do an ls here we'll see that it has been uh expanded or whatever decompressed if you want to use that then we'll go back to the window the whisker menu type in appearance and then we'll go to icons and we'll select grovebox and then we'll hit close now if we open up thunar which is our file manager we'll see that it has 
Grubbox icons. Now, there are other Grubbox icons if these don't suit your fancy, because some of them are kind of bad. Honestly, I don't think that this is the one that I actually used. I think this is the one that I actually used. I probably downloaded the wrong one. Uh, no, that's still not the one, right one. I don't know. Anyways, you can see how you do this. There are several of them to choose from. I think that's the same one that I just clicked on, only in the KDE store. It's also possible that this is the, the appropriate one, and I should have just went to the GitHub page. Let's go ahead and uh, download this one and see what it looks like, shall we? Go to the release pages here and choose the zip file format, download the icon. Okay, we can do that. That's not that hard. Okay, so we're going to go to the re releases page. We'll click on that. Click on the dot zip. It should be downloaded in the right place. Go, go CD into downloads and then unzip Grubbox plus icons. Now oh, there's a lot of stuff in there, isn't there? We do an LS here and see what well we got. Wow. <laughs> that, that, that directory was empty here momentarily ago, um, but that's okay. Um, honestly, I don't know why there's so much stuff there, but we'll see if it even showed up because I'm having a feeling that it probably didn't, but we're going to find out. Appearance. Like so, go to icons, and uh, let's see if it happens to be here, which it does not. Hmm, that's not that surprising. I'm assuming because we didn't follow the directions. We should have. I should have read the rest of the directions instead of just assuming. So let's see here. Download the latest package from the. You can download from different sources. Okay, installation, cp, into. There, so that's the other one. Where did the actual thing go? Okay, I created the proper directory this time, so we're going to see if that actually worked, even though it has it. It should work, but we're going to find out. So we're going to go back to Appearance, and go to Icons, and we're going to find out if the thing that we just installed is actually there, which it is. That's cool. Let's go ahead and look at this. Oh, those are much better. Yeah, so much better. Good. Okay, so... Okay, so that is actually where I'm going to stop, because this is where your trip is going to differ from mine. It's going to depend on what text editor you're using and what terminal you're using. So if you're using XFC4 terminal, you can go up to Edit, Preferences, and then Appearance, I believe. No, it's Colors. And then there may be a Grubbox preset here, but there's actually not. So you'd have to find a XFC4 terminal Grubbox theme if you're going to use XFC4 term. I use Tilex. There's a somebody made a Tilex theme. It was very easy to install. Just Google how to change themes in your particular terminal and it should someone probably has already made one for you. You'll just have to download it. So uh, and every terminal does this differently. So that's the reason why I'm not showing you. So that's the reason why this particular terminal doesn't look all that great. But it should be fairly easy for you to find in order to do for your terminal. Other than that, maybe you'll want to do the Firefox, so do About, Preferences, and then Extensions and Themes, Themes, search for Grubbox, like so. I always use this one here, click Add Themes, Add, and there you go. Now your Firefox looks exactly the same. You can also, if you wanted to change this icon, right click on this, hit Properties, hit, uh, let's see, the Appearance button here, you want to go down here. And then you'll want to search for menu or something like that menu, something like this. It doesn't really matter what you choose, um, something that fits really well. Obviously, none of those really work all that great. Well, actually, we can use the whisker menu one here. That will work fine. That looks much better than the, the blue icon. Yeah, cool, huh? So, finish this out with the proper Unix porn screenshot, just like so. And there you have it. That's how you edit or customize or rice XFCE fairly easy. Now, there are other ways of doing this, obviously, probably easier ways for sure, but this is the way that I learned how to do it and the way that I've done it. Now, again, there are many other things that you can customize your terminal. You can change how some of the other icons act. You can change the padding. Anyway, anything that you want to do, you can hopefully get there based on the basics that I just showed you. So, if you have questions on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. If you have thoughts, obviously comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. Uh, I'm also on TIL Vids, which is a PeerTube instance. So that link will be also be in the video description starting today. You can 
Support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Links for Libera Pay and YouTube will be in the video description below. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. I hope this video helped a whole, whole bunch of people because I know a lot of people were asking. So uh, there's that video. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll see ya.